Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. There's probably a lot of boaters out there, guys that fish the BFLs and the Bassmaster Opens and other tournaments like that that have probably been whooped by their co-anglers from time to time. A lot of them may be a little bit too proud to tell you, but that's not me. That's definitely happened to me before. Today I want to tell you about a time where a co-angler really showed me something that really drastically improved my bass fishing. So stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. This video is brought to you by the Bass Hat, which is this hat that I'm wearing right now with a really unique wooden bass patch made out of an old bourbon barrel. If you guys click on the link in the description and pick one of these hats up, it'll greatly help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. All right, so like what I talked about in the intro, there's probably been some times before where maybe you have been beat by a co-angler, or maybe not even a co-angler, maybe it's just your friend. Maybe you and your friend have been out bass fishing before and he was just catching them better than you, or maybe there was a time where you were catching them better than your friend, and you really showed your friend a little subtlety that really helped improve their bass fishing. Today, I wanna to talk about a time where that exact same thing happened to me. And this happened in a Bassmaster Open. I was fishing on Lake Toho in Florida. And to really set up this story, guys, I had been fishing all week, and the fish were kind of just starting to move up and they were just starting to go from deep water and into shallow water where these fish were more than likely gonna start bedding around pads and around reeds and around different aquatic vegetation. During practice and even during the first day of the tournament, I started catching bass pretty well on a lure called a Gambler Big Easy. It's basically a swim bait that you can fish really effectively through heavy vegetation. It's a great lure and it works really, really well at covering water. And I was catching a lot of fish on this Big Easy during practice and even the first day of this tournament. Towards the end of the first day of the tournament, we started having some of the hottest weather that we had seen all week. And into that night, we had a really warm night. And in the second day of the tournament, it was a really warm day as well. And it, I mean, it was substantially warmer than pretty much any day that we had had leading up to the event. So just like any bass open, I drew a co-angler. We got in the boat that day and I actually made a run down to Kissimmee where I was fishing the day prior. And I'll never forget that when we got there, I started fishing the Big Easy just like I had been all week. And pretty quickly, I had caught one fish. It was a really small keeper, but I just knew that something had kind of changed right? I wasn't really getting the number of bites that I had been. And before you know it, my co-angler sets the hook and he brings in a pretty nice fish, about a two and a half pounder. And I was just thinking, daggummit, I left a fish open. But you know, I was fishing kind of a bigger pad field during this tournament. And with that being said, it's, it's really easy to leave fish open from time to time. You're not going to be able to hit every single target where a fish could possibly be. So I just kind of brush it off, right? That's kind of the only thing that you can do. Well, before you know it, my co caught another one, another solid keeper. And I'm thinking, dang it, I did it again. And then before you know it, again, my co caught another fish. So now he has three fish to my one single lone keeper. And so finally, after the third fish, I kind of started to realize like, okay, they're definitely not doing what I'm doing. What is my co-angler doing? I may have been born at night, but it wasn't last night, so I knew I needed to change. So sure enough, I'm talking to my co-angler just like I normally do, and he's telling me how he's catching these fish. So the lure that he was using was actually a Zoom speed worm, which that's no secret, especially in Florida. Literally everyone fishes a Zoom speed worm, but he was fishing it really different than I'd ever seen before. He was actually pitching this bait weightless into different holes in the pads and things like that that we were fishing, and he was just letting that bait soak. I mean, he was completely dead sticking this bait, I mean, for a long time, like way longer than you would ever expect. And all of a sudden, a fish would come over, pick his bait up, he'd set the hook and catch a fish. And literally, I think it was like, I, I finally decided to tie on kind of a similar thing to what he was doing. And while I was tying it on, he caught another fish. And so literally he's caught four to my one 
little fish and I'm like, all right, like what has changed? So really what had happened is that these bass had actually started to bed, right? They had actually started to move up and we were actually targeting holes in the lily pads and that was actually a hole of where those bass were sitting on a bed. And so he was pitching his bait into that just letting it sit in there very, very slowly, not even moving it, literally just dead sticking it, and a bass would come over, pick it up, and run off. And so he's kind of telling me about this. I get one rigged up. So the crazy thing about this situation is I really didn't realize just how slow my co-angler was fishing this lure because I wasn't really paying attention to him. So I actually rigged up this bait and I started pitching it and I started fishing it kind of more of the, the normal rate, right? I would pitch it in the hole, let it sink to the bottom and I would maybe yo-yo it a few times and then pull it out. And I kept doing that and this guy kept catching more fish and I was not catching anything. And I didn't realize just how slow I needed to fish this until this happened. All right, guys, so I'm not sure if you caught that, but in that video, I actually pitched my soft plastic lure, which I was using a Gambler Speed Worm. It's very similar in shape, um, also weightless, and I pitched it out into a hole, and, I, and he was telling me how slow he had been working this bait, so I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna let it sit there, and I literally grabbed out of my pocket some chapstick because my lips were super burned. I was in Florida. I put some chapstick on and literally as I'm putting that chapstick on, after letting that bait sit there for a little while, all of a sudden I saw my line just start to ease off. It just literally went pop and started to move off. And as you can see in the video, I dropped my chapstick, I set the hook. Now it wasn't a big fish by any means, but it literally showed me how important it was for me to dead stick, like not do a single thing, like pitch my bait in there and just let it sit don't do a single thing to it so i started doing this the rest of that day and it was crazy because in this area there were several other boats probably three or four other boats i never saw any other boats catching fish at the time it was just me and my co-angler and we were the only ones who had really figured this out well he had figured out that these fish had really gone up on the bed and the best way to catch them was to absolutely do nothing with your lure and that was the only way to catch fish during this time i went on to catch my limit and in this tournament i think i ended up finishing in like 47th out of over 200 boats a good finish unfortunately i was just seven spots out of a check for a couple of grand but that's just fishing but guys it really just showed me how important it is at times to dead stick your bait and i mean do absolutely nothing with your lure and Yes, in this case, these fish were actually spawning and up on beds, but guys, there's a lot of other times throughout the year where dead sticking can actually help you to get a lot more bites. I remember a tournament that Denny Brower was fishing back in 2006, he was fishing on Lake Champlain, and I vividly remember him talking about how he was pitching a jig into cattails and reeds and literally just letting that jig sit. He was doing nothing with it. Sure, he was working the bait, but for the first 30 seconds or so, he was just letting it sit. And those fish would come over and pick that bait up and run off and he'd set the hook and he won a tournament. He won $100,000 fishing reeds this way. So I think that there's several different situations where dead sticking really might be a key. One is definitely if the fish are spawning, right? If you think that the fish are actually on beds, Maybe you can't visibly see those fish. Just pitching your lure up to places where you think a fish is actually bedding and just letting it sit there may be a really good idea to be able to catch fish that might be just sitting there and looking at your lure ready to pick it up. I think another time where it might be really good to dead stick your lures is anytime you have a cold front come in. Guys, bass are notorious for shutting down a little bit or getting a little bit slower when you have cold fronts come in. And in those situations, 
you really kind of have to match the bass in their metabolism with the lure that you use. So using a soft plastic and dead sticking that lure or using a jig and really dead sticking it, letting that bait just sit there might help you to get a lot more bites. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned that sometimes dead sticking might be the difference between catching a lot of fish or not catching any fish at all. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please comment below if you have a question and please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.